Joseph is totally Jova. It was terrible, I know. So last time we talked, Gwyneth Westwood, the founder of my not so berry challenge, went clubbing with her alien baby mama, Tanisha Stallings, Tanisha revealing to Gwyneth that she followed her fiance, Joseph Bastianich, from his job to an unknown house, and discovered that the mysterious Tessa Gwyneth had been stressing over wasn't another woman, but was Joseph's secret child. Gwyneth confronted Tessa's mother Sarah Scott, and heard the truth with her own two ears. Everything Tanisha said was true. True, after finding out about everything, there was nowhere else better that Gwyneth could think of going beside the beach. It was peaceful, quiet, and relaxing, and also the same place where she told Joseph she was interested in him. Gwyneth had drank almost half a bottle of wine before heading to the beach and decided it'd be a good idea to go for a drunk swim. She just wanted to feel okay, and lately, she hadn't been, all because of Joseph. The fact that she was stressing out this much over a man who is supposed to be her lover and protector baffled her. This is not what love was supposed to be like. It was supposed to be beautiful, and she certainly wouldn't describe the past sim decade with him as beautiful. A drunk, an addict, a manipulator, now she can add a cheater to that list as well. And the thing is, she wasn't even sad about it. Well, not for herself. She was sad for Rosalie and Bella. How disappointed they'll be when they find out the truth. As for Gwyneth, it no longer mattered what Joseph did to her. She didn't care and she didn't love him anymore. Everything now was just about Rosalie, Bella, Speckles, and Tanisha. Oh, and of course, making Joseph pay. Our property taxes are what? I know Joseph is rich, but damn, Rosalie wouldn't have to worry about her father's antics today. Because right now, she was going on that date to the Oasis Springs retro diner that Levi Birch promised her. She was excited for this, it was a fresh start with a new boy, and he was already impressing her. Girl, please, you're just H word. Um, Levi, why did you just puke on the sidewalk? Please, Rosalie, do not kiss this man. They headed inside, Levi securing them a spot at the bar. He ordered himself a beer with his fake while Rosalie browsed the menu. Looks like Levi was a bit embarrassed from puking a few minutes ago. Dude, you can't be embarrassed on your date. Levi tried to hide his embarrassment as best as he could with some playful flirting, and Rosalie tried to comfort him with an energizing conversation, but nothing seemed seemed to ease Levi's discomfort. And then, out of the blue, he started yelling at her. Lord, here we go again. Rosalie was confused, and already beginning to become discouraged with Levi, but she held on to hope. Hope, when it comes to men Rosalie, a huge mistake every time. Now, it was extremely awkward. Rosalie and Levi barely spoke while they waited for their meals. Rosalie silently munching away at her chicken. When again, Levi began yelling at her for no reason. Okay, that's it. Rosalie was truly done with men and their bullshit, so she went off on him, telling him that he needed to learn how to manage his anger, and that she was leaving. She stormed out of the restaurant. Levi quit to follow her. He apologized to her. He didn't mean it, but Rosalie didn't care about his excuses. Their date was over. Levi knew he fucked up big time, and he really wanted to make things right with Rosalie, but she was too pissed off from what he did, which made her remember what Jaquan and Joseph did. So, she let that anger out. Ouch. I know that felt so empowering girl. She left, Levi crouching in pain in Oasis Springs and headed to the place she felt the safest. Her best friend Finley broke's new crest home. Finley also seemed to be in a mood, but Rosalie knew that he would never lash out at her because of it. She needed to rant about her date, and he was eager to listen. Oh my god, Audra aged up already. Please let this be the last child. Brandy, Rosalie and Finley sat down, her spilling all the deets about what happened with Levi, protecting Detective Finley was obviously enraged by what happened, but Rosalie asked him not to kick his ass like he did with Jaquan. There's no point, it's over with Levi, and she was sure that her dating life was over as well for the time being. She was so exhausted from putting up with men, maybe she should just focus on school and revisit dating in college. She just wanted to be loved, but it clearly wasn't for her. She became a bit sad, so Finley offered to comfort her. 
He held her in his arms on the sofa for a while. Rosalie had never felt so safe. She knew that Finley was the one guy she could trust. She knew that he was the one guy that would never hurt her. He wasn't an asshole. He genuinely loves and cares for her. Perhaps. No, dating Finley isn't an option. She didn't care if they were soulmates. What they have is good, and she doesn't want to chance ruining it. She needs him forever. They can be platonic soulmates at best. That was perfect. We're back at home, and our founder Gwyneth is getting fucking abducted again. We really got to prevent abductions back at the lab. Anyways, Bella was busy with the science project and was excited about a decision she'd made for herself. Joseph was in the jacuzzi, relaxing, oblivious to the fact that his lies have been exposed. But while relaxing, he felt a tinge of guilt about his fight with Rosalie. He shouldn't have called her a harlot. It slipped out and he didn't mean to use that word. He just cares about her and knows how boys are. He wanted to fix things with her. So he went up to her bedroom. His efforts were unsuccessful. She immediately kicked him right out again. And Joseph didn't fight it. Gwynny Boo Bear is back. And if you're pregnant, we're calling Regina. Back to Rosalie. She was about to do something she felt ashamed about. She couldn't stop thinking about Finley. She liked how he defended her from Jaquan. She liked how he listened to her. She liked how he held her earlier on the couch. How his muscles felt. How he smelled. It was too good. But he's also her best friend. She can't end up with him. She can't woohoo with him. But she can still fantasize about him. Right. Our air is watching corn. Corn, Miss Girl. Wow, she is severely H-word for her best friend. She uh -uh. felt so icky when she finished. It was the first time she'd ever done anything like that. But it did get rid of her thoughts about Finley. And it seems like her father Joseph was having the same thoughts about Gwyneth. She knew what he wanted, and she knew she had to keep pretending that everything was fine. So, she would woohoo with him, but it would be the last time ever. She wouldn't mind getting gypsy roast one last time. The morning soon came. Rosalie was eating onions yet again. And today was Bella's last full day as a child. And she would be spending it by doing something exciting and daring. She would be going to her last day of elementary school in her alien form for the first time ever. And she wasn't going to keep any bullies or her alien mother Tanisha from stopping her. This is who she is. And she's damn proud of it. And she wanted to let the world see it too. She's Bella fucking Westwood Stallings. Half human, half alien. And she didn't care who had a problem with it. 